Tidal generation has, has um, a niche to play in the overall energy mix. It's, it's not a silver bullet, it's not going to solve the energy crisis, um, but it has, um, it has a role to play in the energy mix. And in certain parts of the world, in certain countries, it has, ra has a rather large role to play. Um, in other countries that aren't blessed with lots of tidal resource, um, it won't make as much impact. Um, but in certain areas it can make a significant impact, perhaps order 10% of um, energy supply in some countries. The countries most likely to use tidal energy are probably um, the UK, Canada, um, parts of the US, uh, New Zealand, uh, Korea um, and parts of China as well. It's likely to be a very reliable component of clean energy. Um, the tides are predictable. We know where the moon is going to go, we know what it's going to do. So tidal energy is a very, pre is a very predictable resource, which makes it um, very attractive to form part of the, um, the energy backbone um, for a country. It's never going to produce large uh, amounts um, of, of, of power that are going to um, replace coal or gas, perhaps. Um, but it has uh, the possibility of providing um, a small but significant part of a country's energy mix. There are many different types of renewable energy um, and as we move towards uh, a cleaner energy future we need to explore all the different types of available renewable energy resource. One of the ones that hasn't yet been um, uh, tapped into greatly is tidal energy. Um, it is a, it's a finite resource uh, which means we've got to treat it very carefully and we've got to get as much as we can out of it and we must optimise the energy that we can harness from that resource. It, it, it has a lot of similarity with wind and we can learn an awful lot from wind so we're making a, a lot of rapid progress in tidal energy. Um, you're quite right that the tide only goes in two directions or predominantly in two directions um, so we haven't got to have a wind turbine always yawing around into the flow direction. Um, that does make it simpler but underneath the water you've got other effects. You've got these huge waves crashing down from above. You've got interaction with a really rough seabed, um, some horrible um, turbine eddies impacting on turbines. So working underwater is a, it's a pretty nasty environment. There are simplicities associated with which way the flow goes, absolutely, but working underwater is never going to be easy. We are predominantly a theoretical and numerical group. Um, we aren't wedded to um, industrial partners. We're not, we're not trying to follow a particular line of intellectual property to make a particular company successful. Um, we are involved in a lot of large gov um, uh, governmentally defined programs, etc. But where we're different is we've, um, we're able to take a much more um, uh, big picture approach, a more heuristic approach to the problem um, through the various funding mechanisms um, that we have and the projects that we have. That means that we can look a lot further into the future and be a lot more uh, pragmatic um, and honest about the available resource and the future of various technologies and we can make some perhaps unpleasant comments about some of the devices that we wouldn't be able to if we were more industrially um, uh, focused.